Sayu goes hard against Kenji, who recently has the doxing controversy that's going on. Dove Love, who doxed him, is getting canceled on the internet. The person who caused Axia to uh, graduate has been caught by Niji Sanji and has been charged and much more today on the VTuber news segment. Thank you. So yeah, Sayu does end up having a bit of a grudge with um, Kenji, as I'm seeing right now. And uh, she posted something that I'm going to read again, because now that I have the full context of it, it reads differently. He went on his thing that he does, and he said this about Zion. Niji Sanji needs to do a better job finding their talents. Niji Sanji needs to do better back. Niji Sanji needs to do a better job finding their talents. Niji Sanji needs to do better background checks with their talents. This is weird. This is actually weird. Chat, no, this is this. This can't. You can't get any weirder, bro. At this point, you cannot get any weirder. This solidified the weird shit. This has been like an ongoing thing for her. That means it's like an actual fetish. Yeah, she's a fucking pedophile. Fucking pedophile, bitch. I want to see her goddamn uh her shits. I want to see her fucking uh her history. Imagine, imagine her fucking history on her computer right now. Oh my god, her search history is probably crazy. Holy shit, chat. This is insane. Talk to me. Bro, what's happening? I'm. I'm just as lost as you right now. Niji Sanji doesn't uh care. Saw someone, huh? You follow her on Twitter. Yeah, hey, taking that follow back expeditiously. Talk to me. I'm just disappointed. I mean, I'm not surprised, bro. I'm not surprised. Again, when you give um, I mean, how many talents do they have each wave? And they've been putting out waves very, very, very frequently. You're putting out like five motherfuckers. There's no way you know who you're putting out. You know what I mean? She has kids. She got kids? Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Apparently. How do you motherfuckers know this? You motherfuckers are creepy. You're almost more creepy than her. You motherfuckers find out everything. <laughs> you motherfuckers are weird. <laughs> I'm rethinking my community. What the fuck? <laughs> Those poor children. Yeah, no, that's actually creepy. Monkey. Yo, yo, Hanny. Thank you for the, the tier one, bro. Jesus Christ. All right. So now that we have that, this makes more sense. At first, the first time I read it, first time I read it earlier, I was confused as what was going on. It's because it sounded like she was bashing Kenji. And she is. She says, well, honestly... I'll be honest from having been doxxed attacked myself. No one deserves to be doxxed. But those people also have to understand that when they spread hate in other ways, this is how it feels. Karma does come around. I hope they learn that bashing on others for content isn't great. So she's taking it as a karma thing. She's grudge posting. This is not a good look. Even if she may be justified with what is going on, if she may be justified in feeling the way she is because of the fact she was called that term um, with just the information that Kenji had at that point, He's a very outspoken dude. Bruh. He's very open with his outspokenness. He's very much um, someone who will say it as he sees it, as even though he may have a bad take, he will say it that way and he won't kind of push it back. Um, and as a side, this may not be the right time to say it after so many people get doxxed in the last 48 hours, but not wrong though. Karma's a B. We can all agree on that. Uh, we have the lesson from over 1K of lived experience. What does What goes around comes around. Sadly, these people have become so convinced they are acting from a moral high ground that they believe anything they do is right as long as they uh, attacked, are attacking evil. I feel on that one, Sayu. Here's what I don't get about people who dox. Like, how do you go to sleep at night or look at yourself in the mirror knowing that you have just ruined someone's privacy? How I was taught was that home is your safe place, safe place, and that's what I try to have as well. That's why, you know, instead of having my actual dress, I have a P.O. box. You know, things like that happen because you want your space to be safe. Now, uh, this one has no idea what's going on be honest too i understand why you feel that way and your feelings are valid but i don't think anything good can come from saying it like this please don't take this the wrong way i'm out of loop what happened it's hard to imagine people feeling enjoying on ruining other people's lives i don't get it but yeah karma does come around i feel bad for what happened to kenji but i also believe in karma and think he got exactly what he had done in the past to you karma never holds back keep being you sayu i never do something like that to another person i've been taught about value of privacy since small but at the same time, I have to admit, he deserved this and a lot more for what he's been doing. So people think it's karma. Here's the fault in that thought. Just my opinion. This happened in 2022. This dox, the doxing of him, happened in February of 2022. I know because I'm well versed in this one. I've, I've seen everything. February of 2022 is when this happened. Zion got released in March of 2023. Zion was around somewhere around the early parts of 2023. Kenji said what he said in 2023. So how could karma hit somebody before they even said anything about Sayu? Now, what he said was wrong. Absolutely. Not defending Kenji on that one. That was a horrible take. That was an L take. That was a nuclear bad take. Because you have no proof. So don't call someone that term and, and water it down because you want to be edgy or whatever it is. That was a nuclear bad take on Kenji. I'm going to call it like that is. Like it is. I've had L takes in my life. I call it out. I would get called out. 
That was a bad take on his end, but it wasn't Karma because Karma hit before he even did this. So it, it, it's it's a bad kind of wording on there. But I can absolutely understand her frustration. I can absolutely understand her anger. I can absolutely understand why she wants to say those things. And she is free to say it. I'll just say that. I'll just say that it can also bring brigading. It can also bring uh, some hate and stuff like that, which I hope it doesn't happen for Sayu because she's just venting where she feels safest, which is her Twitter profile. And I, I still support her for that. I still support her. I mean, I'm not going to stop supporting her. She's saying something that she feels because she was a victim of doxing and a victim of being called that word. The backlash has started. The backlash is strong when it comes to the thing with Sun Kenji, with Kenji, the VTuber, a person that I've watched for a long time. I don't have a direct contact with them, but I've watched them for a very long time. And this is what someone had to say about it. This is Hayate, who's talking about when they were underage, I believe. A few years ago, I made a tweet longer under a different name regarding Sun Kenji VT and my personal experiences with him as an artist when I was 16, as well as other things I was concerned about. It was fueled by what I had been told by others, specifically Dove. This is the person that we're talking about right now, Dove. I was under the impression that Kenji was someone that could not be trusted, and Dove had privately called me and had discussed with my mother, who wanted to be present, of course she did, as I was still a minor, and she wanted to make sure I was safe about what I should be doing going forward. I believe that I could trust Dove, felt a sense of camaraderie, like a friendship, as I felt that I had also been wronged, and I believe that she had been wronged from what she had shared with me. I will not bring up past drama since that has been resolved, so I will not state the public reasons as to why I originally started to form a document, but Dove had a major hand in pushing me to release this document. Before this, I had no clue about the doxing or anything else besides the fact that she brought up the mods, specifically her, being mistreated by Kenji behind the scenes. I was fueled by my anger and it led to me releasing the twit longer without properly discussing with Kenji, which was an immature move on my behalf. A lot of people released twit longers and a lot of people released um, Google Docs without even talking to the other side. It happens a lot. It wasn't until I had been released the document that Kenji himself had told me everything that Dove had done. So it continues by saying, I came to Dove after noticing the subtweet she had made. These are two things that stuck out to me, which is here. Telling you now, it's not going to end well. He's going to manipulate the S out of you. Oh, 100%. Probably going to tell you the, the same thing he's telling everyone else about me. If he gets a call with you and redirects the issue onto, onto me, then I'm going to tell you I can explain literally everything he throws on on the table. And uh, still continuing to take advantage and manipulate others, minors at that. And then I'm still hearing that you're still talking about me. You're obsessed with making yourself feel better by putting me down and spouting lies. How dare you? Uh, yes, perfect. And I'm scared because what if I do have to sue? And then what if he countersues? Why are you worried about a countersuit if you're doing nothing wrong? That's my main concern here. She goes on. I was shocked to say the least. I had no idea how to react. I hadn't expected any of this and it made me doubt what I had been told by Dove. She had mentioned being concerned about legal trouble before I had come out with the document. And looking back on it, I can now see why. Why would any innocent person be worried about being countersued unless they had also done something wrong? After I had posted the document and was informed by Dove's actions, I felt extremely anxious and was torn about keeping it up or not. At this time, Kenji had also come out about Dove, and I felt as if her credibility was quickly diminishing. Everything I had come out with felt wrong. After a few hours, I noticed that he deleted the post he made about her and questioned her about it. She informed me that they had resolved things peacefully, and I was telling, feeling even worse about it. Why didn't she come clean about the fact that she doxed him in the first place? I felt as if I had been used to push an agenda that wasn't even valid in the first place. So manipulation. Dove is a manipulator from what we can tell here. She goes down here too. Uh, that she started working in July 2021, which was where I was 16, turning 17. Twit Longer was released on July 1st. I can remember correctly that Dove in the first DM me on June 30th. Everything else has been done by June 1st. And she has a response here that she does not want to be associated with Dove anymore. If you know my past identity, I do not wish to be associated with that either. I'm extremely disgusted with Dove's behavior, and I'm sorry that Kenji and his family for having to deal with this type of BS. Goes down further. This person also, TrippyTY777, says, Oh, and for any of y'all trying to defend her, I used to be friends with her, and she's evidence of her admitting to doxing him. I don't want to hear S. She can go to hell. She's manipulative and effing insane. Here's his, his proof right here. It says, hey, so like I wanted to talk to you about something. I heard about the dox Kenji. Also some other stuff that you said about one of my friends. So like, what's that about, dude? Oh boy, so I'm going to say this. Yes, doxing happened in a group chat where I sent his name and what he looks like. I don't know what said about your friends though. Kenji and I dropped all the S we had together and agreed to stop talking about it since all taken care of now. That's still like effed up. Dude, like it's it's a crime. I was hoping it was just like random Twitter BS since he has ha has me blocked on his account and I can't see his tweets. Like that's what made you think it was okay. I don't even know how to feel. I understand that it was and still is extremely effed up and looking back. And I've apologized to him profusely, publicly and privately and um, 
realize the dangers back then. I hadn't intended the danger to come to, to him. Well, you doxed him, so danger will come to him. No matter what, it was in a private GC among friends, and I trusted not to share the outside to the GC. I thought it was cool for no I was cool for knowing that and wanted others to feel cool as well. It's also back in January, not any time specifically. Um, yeah, basically she was, you know, talking about uh this was also back in January, not intense recently. I have learned since that the dangers of doxing people and I know it can affect others if it were to spread. Does this justify what I did in any way? Absolutely not whatsoever, which is why I went and talked to him about our issues and to be able to clear the air between us. I don't expect you to still like me or support me. After what I've done, it's your choice and I respect it, but I wanted to let you know that I'm learning from my mistakes and experiences and have settled it with the person that was that was hurt. That's not enough. And this person also did a, a basically a screen share, as you can see over here, a screen recording of everything that went on, every single little bit that went on. Also, I was 17 in these screenshots, so some stuff might be worried terribly on my part, but immediately stopped effing around with that confession. So he, he stopped. He's one of the people that stopped. Um, Joey is another person that stopped. And uh, also, you know, is showing what people are not sorry. If you feel like you didn't know Dove after today, don't blame yourselves. If you feel compelled to defend her, maybe look a bit deeper into why. She's a pathological liar and a routine manipulator who uses people sh as shields and discards others for her own benefit. I'm one of the five that was in that group chat. After showing Kenji that Dove had indeed doxed him, even though I did what's more incorrect, was more incorrect overnight, even people not in the group chat took her side and shunned me. There it was nothing I could say or show or any of them that would take her side without a victim's light. After having showing proof that she lied to our faces about multiple other ex-friends, situation that led to her being unmodded along with other situations that made her look bad and her financial issues, it didn't matter because I'd sold poor Dove out. I shouldn't have to say, this isn't excusing anyone that knew and don't lie comments under anybody's as saving, saving face. I don't hear all of your names and complicity disgust me. Uh, but to these, they're generally blindsided and heartbroken. Don't blame yourselves. You know, this is all the stuff that happened. Don't worry, we've seen them too. Lit, so what's the problem? And she said she effed up. He didn't. Uh, that's the problem. He effed up and put all those pictures of him still online, but blames Dove. Uh, yeah, no, people were, were, this is all the people, you know, still trying to, a misconception to say anything. You got outed. None of you got outed and I made sure of it. So basically people were trying to, to shun him and get angry at him for doing them, for doing all this type of stuff. Uh, the idea that being a decent human being is outweighed by but this is private group chat. What it said here should stay here is crazy. Not to mention them trying to guilt trip you by saying they thought of you guys were better friends. I've been in that situation where a friend uh, kind of just doesn't um, respect any privacy, but actually not respecting any privacy in this situation. But that this one was good that it got outed, honestly, because doxing is never good. It's never good. And just to finish this stuff up, if you're not Kenji, it's not your apology to accept. Pingu removed... Uh, the lethal company videos that they had with dove this person says pumpkins the fact they apologize now after two years is not good when you doxed harassed and bullied kenji uh this person also here mentioning uh third time as far as i know that it was brought up what happened it's just a shame a grown man with the audience and income as big as he did this to you kenji acknowledged what he did basically she's trying to make herself the victim treat your artist don't treat your artist like shit either come from an artist basically she's trying to make make a victim of this whole type of thing um also it's like why is it usually the people with squeaky clean image in the vtuber space that have the most underhanded or criminal matters revealed about them self-proclaimed degenerate ones being the most real and wholesome yeah i'm a degenerate so i try to be real and wholesome uh, do people not understand that dangerous doxing someone is? It's crazy that anyone would ever think that it's an appropriate action to take regardless of how someone acted. It's never appropriate, never good. Just wanted to show you the kind of backlash that she ended up getting. Article for the thing I was talking about before with the guy, as my model goes and does weird things. Uh, life and regrets of a man who posted trolls over 2,000 times. Internet social networking sites are full of anonymous and related posts, even if it's not directed at you. Just seeing the slander following through, your timeline can break your heart. There are a few opportunities to know the identity of the poster which is true. When we are, try to track down the person who has slandered us through legal procedures, we often find they do not agree to pay compensation. Man in his 30s repeatedly made offensive posts 2,000 times, forcing a video streamer to suspend his activities, causing a huge loss to the streamer and his company. He says, I started getting angry thinking it would make everyone uncomfortable. I couldn't stop the male perpetrator who had caused a huge incident we reflected on this. Quite a people are the victims facing, what awaits the perpetrator when the victim stands up? Closer look at the actual situation surrounding this. So there's repeated attacks from a dusty computer. Daisuke Sato, in his late 30s, uh, resident of Western Japan, lives in a six and a half tatami apartment with a 30,000 yen. That's about 300 bucks, $3,000, about $3,000 a month. No, $300 a month, $300 a month, because 100 yen, it's 300 bucks a month. I eat one meal a day. When I wake up, I cook rice and uh, uh, stir fry it, the meat and vegetables I bought at the supermarket. I'm not feeling well, just lie down, but I'm feeling well. I play games and go for a walk. So he has this messy place. 
Next to the band bed, uh, the barren bed, where I spend most of my day, there's a dusty desktop computer sitting at a low table. What I enjoy is, in life is watching online videos four to five hours a day. Two years ago, I continued to troll the video streamer's YouTube live from my PC for several days. After a while, I received a letter from the company announcing the filing of a lawsuit, making major impact on companies due to suspension of activities. Sato's identity was discovered through legal procedures by any color. And VTuber is a video streamer. It explains what VTuber is. Uh, on a day in August 2022, Mr. Sato engaged in trolling, posting nearly 100 comments in a row in just over 10 minutes, persistently asking about the private lives of Niji Sanji members. The targeted streamers immediately suspended their activities as they were deemed to be a nuisance to the streaming of their friends. She graduated within the same year, causing an uproar on social media. Let's talk about the, the one who graduated, we talked about before. A lot of strange comments about me have been made on other liver streams that can't cause trouble for everyone else, but this liver told the company. Liver himself not only suffered psychological damage, but also forced to cancel his activities as a liver. The company he works for suffered great damage, including being unable to sell products related to the liver. Trolling, which interferes with streamers' work, legally is considered an act of obstruction of business, in Japan at least, and can even be considered an illegal act. According to the Tokyo District Courts, ordering the disclosure of Mr. Sato's personal information, he continued to post a large number of unrelated posts in a short period of time, disrupting the company's business activities and further discouraging the activities of the liver. Considering that it was suspended, it was determined that it was clear yeah, that the company's hungry. business rights were infringed. In February this year, Mr. Sato came to Kyoto City for an interview. He needed to come up with the transportation expenses and a date was set immediately after disability pension was paid. Sato talked about his upbringing. I grew up with a religious mother. The mother said she prioritized faith above all else for her six children. If anything good happens to her youngest son, Sato, she says, it's because I as a mother prayed and depended on my faith. It sounds like a cult-like following. If something bad happens, he says, it's because you don't have enough faith. Go on and worship at the Buddha's altar. Looking back on those days, Sato says I couldn't develop a sense of animation affirmation because I, denied, I was denied my personality. She consulted him once more about going to university, but her mother flatly denied it. Like her older brother and sister, she worked at convenience stores and other places after graduating from high school. I think it's a he, she thing. I think this is a bit mistranslation with, you know, he, she. I think it's a he. Earning a take-home pay of 13,000 yen, <clears throat> which they handed over, and 120,000 yen to their mother. Uh, although she was suffering from a lifestyle, they had no one to talk to at school. And before, before they knew it, she was diagnosed with depression. The internet was a weapon and the one that saved us. The only thing I can rely on is watching online videos on my PC room. Apparently, a friend uh, he met through shared the hobby encouraged him to run from home it's been 10 years since i washed up on land where my friend lived and i've been unemployed and living in six and a half tatami mats they've been instructed by the hospital to rest sato says i definitely wouldn't have survived without the words my family's abusive words still haunt me to this day so they had uh bad abusive words in that case in that sense when this happens they are unable to remain calm and only do they end up blaming themselves and saying it's no good it's not worth it they're venting their paranoia and acquaintances they connect on sns every time that happens we end our friendship and regret it i regret it I can understand anxiety. I have a bunch of anxiety. Like my anxiety is always at a five. So I have uh, things that I take for that, things that I've been given for that. And I take it every day because if not, my anxiety goes over the roof. It wasn't just a hundred vandalisms that were done. He also explained he was impulsive and committing and trolling on the stream. I made a fuss because I wanted to make everyone, both the streamer and the listeners, uncomfortable. I have no criminal record or criminal records at all and wouldn't have done it if I was sober. It was the last time I did something like that. Although there were over 100 trolling posts that were brought up in court, it was revealed that there were actually about 2,000 similar posts. I did that too. When I found out that the streamer had blocked me, I changed my account and continued trolling. And this guy's really obsessed. He was obsessed, at least. They were obsessed. For more than two days, I spent all my waking hours vandalizing the area. Gradually, I realized I had done something dangerous. At the time, he said he was impulsively trolling, but on the other hand, I felt that by posting questions, I could reduce the risk of defamation. I wanted to do something that I would hate the most. I think it would have done the same thing, calmly, uh, looks back at the situation at the time. He also said that he was once looking into what kind of defamation and insults are received from his family. This is not my doing. A man who gave up his faith it clung to God. Over the course of about a year, I received inquiries from providers and an advance notice of a lawsuit claimed damages from the company. Even if I am asked to pay compensation, I am unable to pay it. Please allow me to apologize. In November 2023, he reportedly emailed this to the company. A press release was issued regarding the liver's hiatus in graduation and it became a hot topic. There was plenty of time to apologize by then. I saw the release on the day of the release, but I didn't know what, I, what to do. Even if I apologized, there was no way they would accept it. I couldn't even provide financial compensation, so I had no choice but to wait until the situation was resolved. I couldn't watch it because I was afraid of seeing the reactions on social media, and I thought I would die of fear if I watched it. I believed that the suspension of activities was due to something else and had not been of my own trolling. Almost as if I was praying to God. I have no choice but to, but to blank. I don't want it. And here he has a game using soccer cards that Mr. Sato plays. 
Although he was repeatedly trying to avoid reality and hesitating, he realized that he was that the reality was when he saw the two words lawsuit. Uh, in in Japanese, it's two words. In Japanese, it's two words lawsuit. Uh, after several months of negotiation with the company, settlement was reached, accepting the terms proposed by the company. What do you think when you see news about defamation? Slander can hurt people, cost them jobs, and hinder their ability to express themselves. Some people may even pass away. When Mr. Sato Caesar hears such news, he seems to think not only of the victims, but also of the perpetrators. I did something in the past that I will never be able to atone for, even more than what my family has done to me. Slander and abusive language cannot be caused by the victim. I want to say out loud that the perpetrator is at fault. It may be an outlet for people like me who don't have the time to spare, or it may be the result of children who can, can't think things seriously. Every time I see reports of slander on the news, I see that some perpetrators are unemployed or in worse situations than me. Even if that's the case, that's not an excuse, and I think it can stop before you slander someone. The worst thing you can do is involve others in your pain. I couldn't stop, but I'm determined to never do it again. Perpetrators slander are subject to civil and criminal legal liabilities due to legal reforms. Penalties are becoming even more severe. I also understand that if I do the same thing next time, I will definitely be charged with a crime. I still can't stop watching video streaming because it gives me purpose in life. And that's a lot of people. Even now, he continues to post the video streamer's live stream to X, which he says is purpose in life, but he can't believe in himself. Before going to sleep, he turns off his computer, and when posting online or on social media, he says, I pause and take a breath before pressing enter. I no longer end up erasing what I was writing once or twice. They are unable to work due to illness or disability, have a weak connections with family and friends, and do not hesitate to commit do not hesitate to commit more crimes, and do not accept financial compensation, even if they are pursued with legal responsibility. People who are dead and in life are often referred to by internet slang term invincible people. We asked Mr. Sato, who is close to what is called an invisible person economically, how we should view him. We cannot offer solutions to people who have repeatedly committed malicious acts without any sense of guilt and have become completely invincible. Although this is a low-level conclusion, those who commit crimes deserve to be judged. If you can do anything, you should at least show your sincerity. I asked Mr. Sato whether there are social issues, not personal issues, behind the rise of perpetrators of slander. As far as I'm concerned, the bad situation uh, it, I'm in isn't a matter of my birth. I am grateful to society and have no grievances against society. If society says, I hope you blank tomorrow, I'll say yes. Although it contradicts what he said earlier, I don't want to die, Sato said so. As someone who has done this, I can tell you that everyone has some good side in them. If we cherish what's important within us, we can make a world a better place to live in. I think it will, it will be. Mechanisms will be created to counter slander. Internet will save me from rock bottom. So the internet saved him from rock bottom and it also hurt him. In the anonymous post, there were people who vented their negative feelings on others in the form of slander. Mr. Sato lives in welfare and receives disability pension. When he tried to eliminate slander, he said there's no grievance in society. Isn't it effective from a long-term perspective to aim for a society that supports people like him? Uh, and then at the end it says mosquito, which is, I don't I don't think that one's the actual good uh, translation of it. However, there is no reason why the victims who are suffering now should continue to be at the mercy of slander. Victims who have been waiting until now are now standing up one after another in response to the malicious slander, which they should. The number of consultants to the Legal and Harmful Information Consultation Center, uh, which is, you know, what Git does this, is 5,745 in 2022, exceeding 5,000 for eight consecutive years, following a trend remaining high. In March, the Ministry of Internal Affairs adopted a cabinet decision to amend the Power of Liability Limitation Act, require platforms to promptly delete malicious posts with the aim of swiftly redressing the damage. The company's anti-slander team receives about 1,500 pieces of defamatory information a month. So, yeah, they did what they did. They tried to do it their best the way they could. Nidhi Sanji found him. He, he turned himself in, and worked. they worked for months to get something done. And one of the things that he had to do was do, you know, basically do a public service announcement type of thing, kind of, I guess, like a community service to other people to not slander anybody. And that's good. And I'm glad that they were able to do that, and I'm glad that he felt bad about what he did. We're going to go over everything that Mika says. She says, felt so bad, actual hell. I went over this in one of my previous videos, but I didn't go over actually everything that she said. So we're just going to do it real quick over everything that she has said in her post. Because I just kind of glossed over it and kind of just um, did an overview. But I want you guys to see everything she wrote. She says, content warning, the, this stuff and other stuff related to it. In a time where I had such little control, say over anything in my life, it felt somewhat comforting to know that there was something I could control for once. And it felt somewhat like a weird isolated relief. It got so bad that I went from thinking of it to testing my boundaries to planning it and then trying it. What eventually snapped me out of it was that I, when I failed and got hospitalized, my family wasn't sad, comforting. They were furious. I've never seen them so angry but before, but somehow it hit me. They aren't perfect and they struggle, but they still kept trying their best until the end. And I was scared of getting better because what if I can't? What if I'd fail? Giving up was all I know I succeeded in. TLDR though, I used to be scared of trying and missed the the bar missing the bar back then and saying things and effing up. I had my ups and downs, but it made me a better person in the end. I learned to laugh 
uh, my mistakes now, not expect myself to be perfect, but always to be, try to be better slowly. This is my own story, though, LMAO, but not gonna lie, it feels good to fail now and then. Because it reminded me that I'm human, gives me something to work on. Little me would think older me was insane, to be honest. But anyways, yippee happy. So she's happy. You know, good stuff. Glad that she's happy. Um, sorry, I feel like this. Don't be sorry. I think it went through. I had to go through to be who I am now. I don't regret anything aside from hurting my family's feelings in the past. I've apologized. They apologized. And we are better now, too. So she's in a better place. And remember, yes, um, family will always find, uh, if you have a good family, at least, they will dislike it. They will. It, you're hurting a lot of people beside yourself. That's you know, not to you know guilt trip or anything like that. But remember, there are people who care. There are people out there who care. I yeah, find a nice mix of both. It is such a weird phase. No one wants warns you about growing up. It's also happy to exist. I'm happy that she exists too. And that's what I wanted to mention to you guys because last time I didn't go through the story system. I want to go through the full story. Just giving you the short of it. Don't want to give you the whole long story of how everything happened or anything like that. But according to this is. They unknowingly intentionally committed violations of the employment contract agreement and is suspected of embezzling uh, the assets and physical assets of the company. Violations have been committed by the voice actress of Diva Pichy, which is the VTuber that I showed you before, um, and has violated the contents of the contract, saying that they should not reveal the identity of any of the talents behind the um, behind what they are. Like, you know, you shouldn't dox yourself. You shouldn't dox anybody else. Uh, the voice actor, Steve Apici, is uh, basically had deliberately done things like that, according to what is being said here. Uh, the physical assets uh, belonging to the company, this, this, this is what they're saying in this little part here, that they are um, basically had embezzled it, had um, it was done without permission. It's been done many times by many people. Like I think uh, someone from Bond's Monster Project had an issue with that. Uh, and basically they tried to get in contact with them through WhatsApp. Uh, to basically try to figure out what was going on and figuring out, um, you know, trying to get an idea of what was going on. Uh, they admitted they had changed email of the company's digital accounts belonging to Genesis party intentionally and without permission. So basically, it's kind of like what if we were Nidhi Sanji and you had changed the, the passwords and stuff like that. So basically, she took everything for herself, for what it is. Um, and then, of course, Genesis tried to ask for, for it back. And uh, the contents are, of course, Genesis's property. And they are not allowed to remove it. Uh, and they refuse to carry out the responsibilities and work obligations according to what they're saying here. So they also didn't want to stream or at least made it so that it was harder for them to stream. Uh, they It's kind of, it's a whole contract thing. It looks like second party is obligated to uh, create content uh, and is obliged to fulfill the work that's been given by the first party. Basically, every contract says that if you are told to work, you should work. If you're given all this stuff for your work, you should use it for work. And she wasn't doing that. She wasn't doing anything like that. She was actually just, I don't know, deciding to whatever, whatever the hell she wanted. And they were giving other documents uh, that uh, supported the whole thing of her not wanting to do anything. And also supported the fact that she had a romantic relationship with a person that, that was working with her. A person that was a manager or some sort. Uh, the ex-staff, because right now they're no longer staff, I don't think. Uh, which is, of course, prohibited. You don't dip your pen in company ink. You do not dip your pen in company ink. In Article 2, Paragraph 2, according to this, uh, not having romantic or romantic relationships with one of the staff, almost every company will restrict that from you. So that's one of the things that happened there. Another thing that happened was that um, <clears throat> since everything has been violated, uh, she's going to be, she was warned. She was probably suspended at some point uh, to not repeat the violations. Because they wanted to keep her there. They wanted to keep her there, of course. The voice actor didn't respond, didn't actually do anything uh, to assuage their fears, to kind of make them feel like, oh, you know, this is this is not so big. This is not a big idea. Uh, this is all sus suspicions that they have. This is all the proof that they have is kind of leading them to this whole thing, uh, to this whole thing that's going on. It's been, they had warned her, according to what this thing is saying, 22 days prior. Like over here, it's saying that they had warned her uh, 22 days prior over here to what has been happening. And down here, it was basically saying that um, she did. She was warned on the 6th of April. And basically, she was being told that 6th April is probably going to be like one of her uh, what's going to be happening at that point. She was warned of, of uh, that there's going to be consequences for these things. Whereas the acts committed by them, uh, the 
because every company can decide that. Nidhi Sanji, Hollow Life, whoever can decide that it is not in good faith anymore. You're not able to have good faith arguments. You're not able to have good faith communication between the two. And you will most likely you know, be done there. Where um, <clears throat> it is a violation uh, of her. She has done it. And that's what they suspect. And she did it deliberately. That's what they're saying. And because of there were deliberate acts, they're going to be getting rid of her. They're just like, they're going to apologize because it's also the responsibility of the company to make sure that their liver doesn't do these things, to make sure that the liver doesn't go through this type of stuff and, you know, put the, the fans through this type of stuff. Uh, they wanted her to take full responsibility, but she hasn't taken full responsibility. And all forms of gifts, all forms of super chats that can be returned, any donations that can be returned will be returned. Everything will be refunded. Uh, memberships will be refunded. Everything that they can will be refunded by by the by Genesis because they want to kind of keep things on a positive note when it comes to all this stuff. And uh, that means that, of course, Divya Peachy is going to be uh, she's, she's going to be gone because she took over their accounts, which means that she changed all the passwords for all of the accounts that you're given, whether it be TikTok, Facebook, whatever it is. She, she all those are gone. Uh, she had relations with a manager. She basically, that's embezzlement of company property, the whole, you know, that stuff. She was told, you know, this isn't good. You shouldn't do this, that kind of thing like that. She didn't show any kind of remorse. She didn't respond to their things and she got fired because of that. And that is one of those things where you deserve to be fired. And she was warned 22 days ago, March 27th. Uh, and it was there were, she was warned by the lawyers that they were going to be taking actions and they should, you know, be mediating these things. She didn't want mediation. Uh, they contacted them again on April 6th. They did all these types of things and nothing, nothing was received. So because there is no good faith on her part, they are just wiping their hands with her. They're just pretty much washing their hands away and then just doing their own thing on their own side. I can agree with that. I can understand that. A company is not beholden to you in any shape, way, shape, or form. It is some really mean stuff for someone to be doing that. It's really kind of weird, really kind of, I don't know what you would call it, other than uh, alarming on the side of of people, of, you know, this person, you were given such a good opportunity and you did this. Uh, of course, you're going to get fired and deservedly so. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.